Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Astra Microwave Products Limited Q3 FY23 earnings conference call. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company, which are based on the beliefs, opinions, and expectations of the company as on the date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risks and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participants' lines will be in listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and zero on your touchstone phone. Please note this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. S. G. Reddy, Managing Director. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Vikram, and good afternoon to everyone. A warm welcome to all the participants to the post earnings call of our company. I am with my colleague, Mr. M. V. Reddy, Joint Managing Director, and Mr. Atim Kabra, Director, Strategy and Business Development, and SGA, our Investor Relations Advisors. The results and investors' presentation for the quarter ended, uh, third quarter ended, are uploaded on our website and the stock exchanges. I hope you have an opportunity to look, to look at it. I'm happy to inform you that we have reported another quarter of stellar performance and recorded our highest ever quarterly profitability. We achieved record EBITDA and the patch of 53 crores and 30 crores respectively for the quarter ended December. For nine months period, we have delivered 86 crores of PPT, which is our guidance for the entire year. This quarter is a good quarter, not only in terms of sales and profitability, but also in terms of products delivered by the company. We have delivered following systems to our customers during the quarter. Radiation mode test and evaluation facility, 7.3 meter antenna system for ITR, ST radar for Kolkata University, and PATM2 for ITR. We expect to deliver about 270 crores of sales during quarter four, and reach an overall top line of about 825 crores. Bottom line at the PBT level will be about 110 crores. We expect to end the year with an open order book of about 1750 crores. For the next financial year, we are confident to book about 900 plus crore orders and deliver top line of about 950 crores and a bottom line at the PBT level of about 135 crores. Long term view for the next five years, ending 2028, we are confident to deliver a cumulative top line of about 8,000 crores and carry over order book of 6,000 crores at the end of 2028. During these years, we are confident to deliver bottom line at PBT level of 15 to 18% of revenue. Before I open this discussion for question and answers, I introduce my new colleague, Ms. Hatim Kabra who joined our board as a full-time director, taking off, looking after business and the strategy development from 1st January 2024. Atim, I warmly welcome you. Thank to you, Ajay. Yeah. yeah. Thank, thanks, Ajay. And hello, everybody. As a fellow shareholder in my mind, I represent all shareholders, and I'm very excited by what I see in potential business at Astra. My desire is that we relate Astra with radars, that we know that our company is a key enabler in electronic warfare and a key enabler of missiles subsystems. We know Astra as being a key player in the satellite space. And lastly, its products in meteorology and weather segments are important for the nation. We are looking at a significant growth phase for the company, which has delivered a very healthy return to its shareholders. With a five, and we are looking at a five-year cumulative sales execution forecast of close to a billion dollars in gross sales. To put it in perspective, that's nearly 10 times our current sales trajectory cumulatively. And we hope to grow our order book alongside to a very, very healthy number at the closing of year five. Even better is that we expect this rear-ended sales growth 
to be with improving margins and rising return ratios kudos to our r&d team which is developing multiple exciting products under the leadership of our founder director mr chitraka and as as far continues to go up the value chain we are right up there in systems and solutions already we are proud to be a part of atmanirbhar bharat while we continue to work with our valued partners from overseas and progress in our arc jv with rafael israel is a proof of this besides our esteemed export partners that's our vision that's our very simple story and we'll explain as we go along in the question answer sessions sgmb yeah now this is the forum is open for question and answer thank you very much sir ladies and gentlemen we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touch tone phone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and two participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles to ask a question please press star followed by one on your touch tone phone now we have a first question from the line of hitanshu bhatia from gandhi securities please go ahead am i audible yes you are please go ahead yeah congratulations on a good great set of numbers sir uh, i have two questions one is on the 31st page of the investor presentation you mentioned about navic and gps receivers so uh, could you throw some more light on the prospects of it and the second would be that we had bid for the tender alongside some private players like alpha design elena geo system and also manjira digital systems so what was the outcome of that tender with regard to the navic uh, and gps i'm talking about has it been awarded to us and i mean also i believe we have a customer relationship with the company um, manjira digital systems so could you also elaborate on our relationship with manjira as well thank you that's that's it from my side Yeah, yeah, me. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, hi. Uh, <clears throat> so this is regarding the Navic uh, uh, systems. Uh, as we have mentioned in last investor call, uh, we have uh, invested in a startup company called Manjira uh, Systems, which they are professional in this VLSA design and all. So they are developing baseband chip, and uh, for uh, Navic uh, products. and with the using that chip we are developing sub systems like uh, receivers for various applications and also tracking units uh, like vehicle tracking units and all which are in development phase so currently the baseband chips are uh, in the final stages and uh, we expect this particular chips to get qualified from isro in next one month time frame so probably by uh, in 6 months to 8 months time frame we should be the you know demonstrate in demonstrate this uh, subsystems or uh, for navic applications this is what our we have a roadmap as far as the navic is concerned so the potential in the navic and gps receivers if could throw some more light on it so the huge potential is there in fact uh, with the kind of applications which we are targeting uh, next 5 years we should have at least about 2000 crores worth of business uh, minimum business what i'm talking about Uh, from the different sectors. Okay, sir. And sir, the the uh, thing would be that uh, if we, yeah, sir, please go ahead. Yeah, I will add to this that there, to the best of our knowledge, there are only two companies in India which are developing this chip. Okay. So around this chip, once it is approved, there will be not only us. but other guys also who would be developing the sub systems which or, or yeah, the receiver modules which in uh, these talking about uh, we will initially compete probably with imported chips and we are very well placed in terms of our costing and margins over there so this could be a very huge business as the business as the story translates into uh, real life applications Okay, so, so the the only doubt that I have is that if we are a, if we have a customer relationship with Manjira, and you would be competing with them on the same tender, so how how would that go out? 
actually see uh, uh, basically initially we competed but now uh, we are working together okay so so now there would be no conflict of interest with uh, manjira and us right? yeah and uh, with regard to the tender that we have so uh, if you look at that we have a relationship with only for one particular product other products even within navic feature we may compete okay okay and and regard to the tender that we had bid so have we won the navic uh, tender with uh, the ministry of electronic um, affairs or uh, what's the outcome of that tender sir has the result come out yet no uh, we uh, and price front like actually we uh, we are not there so but uh, as i mentioned like you know manjira won the first order okay. where you know we are uh, invested in particular product to get developed but otherwise the second tender where uh, we have participated uh, on the price front we lost it okay okay yeah thank you thank you to ask a question ladies and gentlemen please press star followed by on your touch tone phone now we have next question from the line of riya verma from nr securities please go ahead Hi sir, thank you for the opportunity. I just have two questions. Firstly, on the gross margin side, as well as an increase in our quarterly margin uh, for two consecutive quarters now, I just wanted to understand on the sustainability of these margins. So, if you could please elaborate a bit on the reason for this margin improvement and how sustainable these factors are in the future. no the margins uh, delivered by the company at the end of uh, q3 are sustainable for the future in fact you can see you can see the an improvement uh, uh, from now on uh, your other question is uh, how the change in margins has occurred i didn't get your first question so i was just saying uh, this margin improvement uh, what are the factors behind this and is it sustainable yeah it is sustainable that i already answered in fact it can improve but uh, the improvement is coming in because of the uh, change in the sales mix of the company uh, as explained in the past many times uh, the domestic sales carry higher margin compared to the export sales up to now the export sales are almost equivalent or more than the domestic sales going forward the mix is skewed towards domestic therefore uh, the increase in margins is happening the uh, improvement in the margins is happening Okay, and one more question. Yeah. Uh, what would be the long-term sustainable pass margin levels according to you? So PBT levels, uh, I already said, uh, probably fifteen to eighteen percent is the one which, which which is sustainable. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. That answers my question. Thank you. A reminder to participants: if you wish to ask a question, please press star followed by one on your touchstone phone. Next question from the line of Vignesh Iyer from Sequent Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, congratulations, sir, on good set of numbers. Uh, sir, I did hear you saying that revenue of 950 crores is expected. Uh, you expecting around uh, for FY24, and uh, and you mentioned 135 crores. I missed it. What number did you mention? It 135 crores. Yeah, you heard it correctly. Yeah. Uh, one thirty-five crores of what? I mean, it is P P B T levels. P B T levels. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, also, coming to your order book that you are expecting around nine hundred crores. Can you, uh, uh, you know, explain to us what is the area you are targeting? I mean, you are expecting to get majority of the orders from. Like, say, if you could just say if it's from the missiles or the uh, which which area of the defence, just a ballpark number would do. Yes. Yeah, I'm very ready. We'll take that call. Yeah, for next year, uh, close to thousand crores we are uh, uh, targeting to book. Out of thousand, nine hundred and thirty are from the domestic sector. In that, defence and aerospace together, close to seven fifty crores. And uh, from space sector, about hundred crores. Metallurgy and hydrology, together about eighty crores. And the exports. Uh, we have planned to book 150 crores okay and in, in exports also we have uh, almost like a similar margin profile to uh, domestic no and uh, exports of out of 150 uh, 50 crores is from uh, you know bts again is bts uh, contracts and 100 crores uh, btp which is a flow margin right 
right yeah got it got it thank you sir thank you for the clarification all the best thank you thank you we have next question from the line of ketan gandhi from gandhi securities please go ahead hi sir as a follow up on uh, navik uh, the tender which we lost is it in uh, l5 band or l5 and f dual band module is a dual band okay so now we are working on l5 or f band yeah l5 l5 okay and government made is any mandatory uh, fitment of the navic chip into mobile uh, telephone and all the other equipment yeah we expect this uh, policies to be out i think you know uh, government uh, in fact what we heard is uh, government working towards that and uh, only thing is that waiting for the more uh, manufacturer uh, in this particular domain like you know only limited players have come is the indigenous development now once with the more number of players will be there then i think probably uh, policies can be made that is what we heard about uh, from different agencies okay and can uh, sir uh, in itro document it's written that l5 band is expected cost per unit is uh, around 5000 rupees and l5 and s dual band is around 10000 rupees per unit is that understanding correct yeah yeah you are right okay i have some more question i'll join back in the queue yeah thank you a reminder to participants if you wish to ask a question at this time please press star followed by one on your touchstone phone now we have next question from the line of pulkit junjunwala an investor please go ahead hi good afternoon uh, we wanted to get some clarification on the fundraising that uh, we had proposed to raise 400 crores uh, any idea on that can you give us some clarity yeah we are on the job uh, right now the members uh, voting is going on uh, and uh, yeah we are on it probably you'll come to know more developments maybe in the next uh, fortnight and uh, is it uh, like a issue of uh, shares or like which uh, model are we going for in order to raise that 400 crores there will be dilution yeah it will be dilution okay okay i'll join the queue i just clarify the resolution is for up to 400 crores i think okay and uh, just while we are on it uh, i would like to get the management perspective on uh, why uh, do we need this capital at this point of time is it for working capital for future orders no it is a mix of both uh, primarily as you know the defense procurement policy uh, there is a drastic uh, changes have come in where the government is encouraging the private sector to take the risk uh, invest in new product development get the product developed so that uh, Uh, the companies can compete as and when this uh, business is available and also because of this uh, import embargo uh, good amount of opportunity is available for the private sectors to identify their uh, key areas where they have the expertise and we should be able to take that financial risk in developing those products and be ready for demonstration as and when those opportunities arise majority of this uh, qip or the fundraise is to make the company financially strong so that it can invest in these technologies and develop the products a small portion of that of course is there for working capital but i would say that majority of that is for the uh, this kind of new product developments okay thank you thank you we have next question from the line of subrata sarkar from mount intra finance please go ahead hello yeah please yeah, go hello ahead. Yeah. yeah sir couple of question first uh, sir can you clarify w- once more the target which you have given for uh, 2000 like next uh, after next 5 years what kind of revenue and order book uh, we were expecting that you uh, told like can you reiterate once more sir for better understanding for the next 5 years starting from the financial year to uh, we should be able to do a cumulative sales of about 8000 crores cumulative sales of about 8000 crores and at the end of the year 2028 we should have an order book of about 6000 crores 
ओके सर परफेक्ट सर नाउ फ्रॉम आवर प्रेजेंटेशन इन 27 ऑफ स्लाइड नंबर 27 यू हैव मेंशन लाइक वी हैव एक्सपर्टाइज इन यू हैव गिवन द एक्सपर्टाइज ऑफ वेरियस प्लेयर्स अक्रॉस सेगमेंट्स एंड देयर वी हैव मेंशन लाइक वी हैव सिस्टम एक्सपर्टाइज सो कैन यू जस्ट इलेबोरेट अ लिटिल बिट लाइक व्हिच सिस्टम्स वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट एंड व्हाट इज द पोटेंशियल ऑफ दैट सिस्टम सर I, I in fact first of all now your voice is not very clear it is breaking away hello uh, yeah sir i directly you would like to know what kind of expertise we have in the systems am i right yes sir yes sir you have mentioned like we have system expertise so i just want a, a little bit more elaboration on that systems you know we uh, already started delivering radar systems and uh, we build this systems group uh, within astra in uh, addressing radar and electronic warfare uh, in electronic warfare segment we just initiated uh, designing the systems for uh, airborne applications and as well as for the ground application whereas in radar we already delivering this uh, telemetry tracking radars and also surveillance uh, well, uh, small range surveillance radar and we are developing uh, counter drone radar and also we are planning to develop a bird detection radar kind of radars we are we have in pipeline so likewise we have developed the system expertise within the company and uh, apart from that in future uh, going forward in space domain also we are uh, trying to build payloads satellite payloads last question you have mentioned about like uh, uh, major uh, purpose of uh, this fundraising is major part will go for new product development so if you can elaborate again uh, a little bit more like which area like or which specific product we want to be prepared with so that there is a new uh, opportunity comes from the government side defense side we can uh, explore that so if you throw some light on the what are the areas uh, and new products we are trying to develop with this new funds uh, uh, many uh, projects uh, which we we could see having good potential in going you know in future uh, and which have been already come under uh, import you know embargo so there we have picked up few projects and also based on the responses what we have sent and uh, what uh, we are uh, having that confidence to develop so we could take a few projects development which uh, which are basically in radar domain of radar uh, and electronic warfare uh, in defense and uh, as far as the uh, satellite is concerned we are also getting into the defense uh, you know pay, payloads these are the uh, few uh, important projects which we picked up yeah we will not give the names you of the projects the, you know the negative you know the negative list which have come out right there are more than 400 yeah. items on the negative list yeah that's a from the major list yeah, right now competing yeah. hello can you hear me yes sir hello 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 sir i'm there more than 400 items yeah after more than 400 items in the negative list we are right now operating in probably 40 45 items only uh, which are in our domain out of those 400 plus of which we are operating currently in around 15 which leaves us with a huge amount of uh, products and which we can fill in, in in the negative list alone while we are developing a whole range of other products uh, in the segments which and we already just mentioned Okay okay thank you sir that's all from my side thank you thank you participants who wishes to ask a question may press star 1 we have next question from the line of viraj shah from shah investments please go ahead uh hi sir just wanted to know are we expecting any orders from hindustan aeronautics with the respect to the new helicopter plant Uh, from HAL, we are expecting orders for that LCA uh, Uttam radar, and also going forward other uh, airborne radars. What we are uh, going to develop uh, for the airborne platforms. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We have next question from the line of Amit Dixit from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. <coughs> yeah. Hi. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for the opportunity. uh first of all congratulations for a good set of numbers i have a couple of questions 
the first one is essentially if you look at the q4 results of you know uh, other companies like hal bel they are even bdl they were at uh, you know low on execution so uh, do we going forward do we see a risk of some of the orders that we were expecting uh, getting delayed in fy24 uh as of now uh, we yeah uh as of now uh, whatever the numbers which we have mentioned i think we have a, a good probability in booking these orders and uh, this is as on date whatever uh, visibility we have with that only we are presenting this i think uh, we should be you know uh, in position to book this 1000 crores order uh, in next year Uh, but Amit, we are not a quarterly driven company. Amit, we are not a quarterly driven company, right? So I think we have to look at this on a rolling quarter basis. There may be delays, uh, some critical components may be delayed coming in, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you know, I think this company is not a company where you can you know put in place a quarterly number and expect that uh, we will hit that number every possible time. Right. I think MV Ready and SV Ready have done a tremendous job in terms of exceeding uh, the targets which which have been set out. You know, but uh, be cognizant that uh, there could be delays in the system itself, which can sometimes put the push the numbers out, and sometimes maybe we can get uh, lucky also, and we can be getting some excellent orders which may, we may not have been, we may not have anticipated. you are aware that we said uh, you know the four um, doppler radars were dedicated to the nation uh, the minister came out and said the that he is expecting doppler radars to be installed all over the country now that's a massive business which we had not anticipated but we will be gearing up for that we have delivered 10 doppler radars to the country at this point in time and that's a significant piece of business which can which which is evolving which was not anticipated also great uh thanks for the clarification the second question is essentially if you it is possible to provide uh, the break up between uh, bts and uh, btp uh, orders uh, i mean as far as the execution is concerned in this quarter and going forward what would be the net would be targeting between bts and btp yeah uh, for the current quarter we don't have any bts export uh, sorry btp export order uh, but uh, going forward next year as i mentioned out of 150 crore uh, which we are expecting from the export segment uh, 50 crores from the bts and 100 crores from the btp rest all in domestic as you know all are you know bts uh, orders we don't have any btp in the domestic business okay Great. Uh, thanks a lot, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. We take the next question from the line of Bhavik Shah from MK Ventures. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, sir. Congratulations on a good set of numbers. Uh, so, just wanted to understand the developments on the anti-drone front. So, you are going to uh, demonstrate it by January or February, if I am not wrong. You were mentioned in the last call. So, so any update on that front? yes uh, we we are uh, going to demonstrate very soon i think uh, it's in the final testing stage uh, definitely you will heard we will hear good news in uh, next few weeks time and so now uh, could we sense what opportunity could this be for the company or we will still need to wait for that opportunity is there like we have participated a few tenders recently uh, from air force and army i think uh, we are uh gearing up for a demonstration of this particular product once we are through then i think uh, we'll be in a position to inform you exactly how much business we can get in this but otherwise opportunity wise yes we have a good amount of opportunity for this particular radar right so and so any developments on the space front last couple of years were not that good for the space end so like uh, how do we see space going ahead yeah uh, as you know that you know um, barring communication satellite sector which in fact been uh, open for industries to take up this isro is continually working on this strategic segment we uh, from which we can expect this subsystem order from isro and uh, isro uh, i think you know definitely 
with some kind of a business we can get for the couple of years. Apart from that, as I mentioned uh, just now, when we are also trying to build satellite payloads to for the strategic applications, that is something which we are launching soon. Right, right. Okay. And so any update on the CAPEX front, like how, what is our CAPEX till nine, nine months and what could be the CAPEX going ahead? Yeah, for this financial year, uh, the overall CAPEX will be about, uh, and up to mm -hmm. nine months, I think we have spent close to about 15 crores. Okay, sir. Is there any guidance on the CAPEX front? Uh, for next year? Yeah, for upgrading the existing uh, requirements, probably we may be spending about uh, 10 to 15 crores. Okay. But we have a larger plan uh, in terms of uh, creating facilities for the overall systems, whatever we are planning for. Uh, those details probably we can share with you in the next call. Once okay. Okay. The process gets over. Okay. Thank you so much and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Participants who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone now. We have next question from the line of Shuja Siddiqui. An investor, please go ahead. Thank you for making my question. Uh, sir, there is a great opportunity in the different sector with whatever measures the government is taking. The question that I have is, what are the constraints which, are, which, which is stopping you today from executing uh, we're sorry to interrupt, Mr. Siddiqui. Your uh, volume is very loud. Could you please speak a little close to your mic? Uh, uh, hold the mic uh, close to your uh, and then speak a little uh, slow. Thank you. Yeah, so my question is that there's a massive opportunity in the press today. Uh, the question to the company is, what are the constraints that stopping the company from either executing more from the order book that is already there? and getting more orders going forward. So how do you create a machine which is continuously on the you know, treadmill of getting more orders and executing more orders? See, we are doing that. Uh, if you look at the profile of uh, the products delivered by the company, it is largely components and subsystems what we are doing. Uh, this product base has, has its own limitations in terms of uh, execution. But going forward, that is what we are sharing with you. Uh, the overall uh, uh, environment is also changing, wherein the private sector has to be more aggressive in terms of bidding for the projects, which we are planning to do. Therefore, you see more accelerated action coming in from the company in the, in the near future. Is there, are you in a position to share something at the moment about your future strategy? Future strategy we have already shared. Uh, say we are planning to raise some capital resources so that we will be investing in uh, new product developments so that we can compete uh, with other people when the market is uh, actually opening. Uh, yeah, that is what we are. We are graduating from a subsystem company to a system company in a bigger way. And uh, accordingly, we are planning our actions so that uh, We'll be we'll be there to take that market as and when it is open. So, do you need some strategic tie-up for anything like for you to get more, you know, uh, develop more products and get more strategic high-value products, in, or you will develop all of this on your own? Now, few products we are uh, working with some uh, foreign OEMs. Uh, one is that with joint venture, we have one joint venture with Rafael, where we have added. Uh, few other product lines apart from that SDR, uh, what we are uh, manufacturing in JB, like uh, we have added electro optics and all. Similarly, uh, we have some other products which we are uh, discussing with uh, some few OEMs and uh, you would see uh, few announcements in uh, coming Aero show. So I don't want to reveal at this. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We take next question from the line of Vignesh Ayer from Sequin Investments. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity again, sir. Uh, I just wanted to know how, what is uh, on the semiconductor side, how is the availability as compared to earlier quarters? And if you could tell me how, what is our receivable days and working capital cycle as on uh, quarter three end? As far as the availability of semiconductors is 
uh, slightly improved as compared to the last quarter. Uh, I think the lead times are uh, coming like you know uh, in a normal mode. But still, yes, uh, it's not so comfortable as we enjoyed pre-COVID situation. Uh, but I think maybe next one or two quarters, we expect that should come in a normal. Uh, and uh, as far as working capital, I think SG will answer. Yeah, we have receivables of about 300 crores. Uh, domestic is about uh, 289 and uh, exports is about 28 crores. In terms of the working capital days, uh, uh, it is typical to semiconductor industry where, where uh, I mean, uh, RF and micro industry, uh, where the stocking of inventory is one of the critical items for execution of the projects on time. And also these, these uh, semiconductor devices, which is a very critical input, is available only from specified markets who are actually the global leaders. Uh, therefore, we are forced to uh, place orders on hand uh, in advance and sort the material for the project duration cycle. Because of these factors, our working capital days are fairly high compared to the normal industry. And currently, it is around 300 plus the number of days is the working capital days. Okay. Uh, so, so, if I'm not wrong, our peak quarters as uh, it comes to is around uh, quarter three and quarter four. And with how, how things are pan, panning out, uh, are we still looking to front load the inventory going ahead or we might see some inventory days coming down? No, I don't see in terms of inventory management, I don't see any major changes happening. As it is you now, we are struggling for availability of the semiconductor devices. Therefore, as and when they are available, we have to buy and stock it. Uh, therefore, uh, at least in the near future, I don't see any major changes coming in. Oh, okay. Uh, and sir, I, at the start of the call, you said that uh, quarter margins of like 23% is uh, you're comfortable and you, uh, you feel that this could be sustainable. So when you say that, I uh, mean, uh, I mean, the beta margins for the entire uh, FI23, you see more or less at same levels, right? No, I am only talking at the uh, PBT level. Uh, the current uh, uh, year we are likely to end about 13 to 13.5 percent of PBT. On a top line of about 825 crores, uh, we are projecting we have a PBT of about 110 crores. I said that these margins are sustainable and there is a fairly good chance of improvement over this. Okay, fine. That's all for my side. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star 1 on their touchstone phone now. Okay, next question from the lineup. Avishek Dave from Bright Securities. Please go ahead. Hello, am I audible? Yes, you are, sir. Please go ahead. So I had one question. Uh, so, based on your current order book, can you give some guidance for the next year? It is already done. Uh, at the top line, uh, we will do around about 950 crores. And uh, bottom line will be close to about 135 crores at a PBT level. Uh, okay, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We take, we take next question from the line of Ashit Koti, an investor. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, sir. Thanks. Uh, my question is, sir, uh, uh, drone technology is getting commercialized. Uh, are our company, is our company planning to get into providing uh, sensors or any, any products or subsystems to this particular category? Uh, you mean to say sensors for drone? Yeah, I mean, say, uh, sensors also would be required there also, right? When, but we are not addressing uh, uh, drone market. We are only addressing drone detection, like, you know, uh, yeah. on the drone system, but uh, not in the drones. We are not operating in the drones. No, I, I got your point. When you are, uh, my question was basically since you are already anti-drone devices kind of thing, so yeah. alternately, uh, when the drone technology being exploited commercially for commercial applications, not the defense part of it. So over there, uh, there could be need for uh, so many other things uh, apart from, uh, means one of the major things would be sensors. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, 
See the major risks are like you know timing of the orders uh, based on the visibility what we have and the information what we gather from our customers. Uh, we have been projecting yes there could be delays here and there uh, based on the priorities and based on the uh, delays on overall projects you know uh, from OEM or uh, uh, and also from the user end. So those kind of a delays are always there in the defense market as you know it is not something new. And apart from that, on the execution front, yes, uh, still though the situation of you know the components, uh, especially in the semiconductor and uh, power supplies, uh, you know we have been facing a severe shortage. That I think probably you know is like slightly improved compared to the last two quarters, but uh, still a lot of more improvement is required in that particular domain. And uh, because of that, probably you know the on the execution front, uh, like this current year also, uh, we will be short of 20 crores as compared to the original uh, projections. Um, but you know uh, we have factored all these points, but uh, we we will hope you know for the better uh, you know situation in the components industry for going forward in the next year. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you for the candor and the honesty. Um, so one last uh, one last question. So could you help me with some sort of more? Uh, if from the same clients, can you get some more work, or are you diversifying in one of more or more into more geographies as well? Yeah, uh, we are already there in the international market, uh, apart from services <coughs> industry. See, uh, one is that, like you know, um, in fact, Mr. Latim Cabra is uh, looking after this particular area. Like you know, we are trying to develop solutions from the for the. Uh, you know other uh, countries uh, by with the using our particular systems what we have today and uh, we are trying to uh, sell the complete solution uh, it's too early to dis disclose about these solutions i think probably in uh, maybe after uh, uh, think next investor call probably we can share in a detailed uh, this thing roadmap for this but otherwise yes we are trying to explore the uh, exports like you know international business with a different concept. All right. So that's so that the existing from the existing product line. I would add, uh, uh, as, uh, one second. Yeah. Uh, for the existing product line, as I mentioned, uh, my our customers who are giving us BTP business already started giving us the uh, BTS orders. Uh, we have initiated. Uh, we got a couple of uh, you know good inquiries which are uh, trying to be metalized in the first quarter of the next year. And uh, we are discussing with many companies uh, for this uh, BTS uh, business as they are planning to develop uh, systems for the Indian market. Yes, Atim, go ahead. Yeah, no, I just, I was just adding that uh, there, you know, once you get into systems, there is an international market which is there for which is there for us to compete in, but we need, but it works not on a tender basis, but on a slightly different. Uh, sales process. It will take time. Uh, we have, you know, you should be aware that we have products which are identified and strategies are being put in place as we speak to uh, explore those markets. And these are fairly big, sizable numbers, but we would be, but it might take time. So we'd rather come across to you and share the good news to you when we have clear orders in sight on these markets, you know, from these markets. But this is a sizable opportunity where we can make a big difference to our, to our product line and to our bottom line also. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks a lot for your time. Yeah. Thank, you. yeah. Thank you. We take next question from the line of Pulkit Junjunwala, an investor. Please go ahead. 
Yeah, uh, I was just uh, wondering, you know, as an investor, when we see our peers who are uh, in the listed space, uh, we find ourselves in a situation where uh, our top line is maybe twice there, and maybe uh, you know uh, they trade sales to market cap of maybe 20x, and whereas we are less than one, and we feel that you know we although we the management has done some great work, uh, the operating margins are increasing. But when we do a brief comparison, the operating margins that they are trading at, I mean, they are having a north of 40 percent kind of operating profit margins. So is there, I mean, I'm sure we've heard so many things about uh, what is in the pipeline from this call. I was just wondering, uh, you know, is there anything that you can share now uh, where we can understand that our top line is bigger, you know, our uh, technicality, the technical skills is better uh, from what I'm understanding. So where are we lacking? Like, do uh, you think uh, something is some? I mean, the opportunities are there for the taking. So could you just elaborate on that, please? Yeah, guys, opportunity set is there. We are now more proactive in communicating our story. You have seen how we have been, you know, how forthcoming we have been in the last few investor calls. And as the story gets out, I am sure there will be a set of investors, an incremental set of investors who would be interested in our story. Why somebody, you know, this is a big market. We don't want to comment on why somebody is being valued slightly higher, right? Okay, maybe they've communicated the story better. Maybe they are better in the perception of uh, the folks. We are fairly confident about our story. We are confident, as SG has very clearly mentioned to you and committed, that this is a rising, sustainable margin story. You know, we have, we are RF guys. Our bomb is already there. As we increase in size, maybe there will be efficiencies which will get. So, uh, you know, it suffice to say that we, we can only communicate to you that this is uh, increasing sales, significantly increasing sales story with sustainable increasing margin story. The return ratios will obviously look better. So uh, where you value somebody in the food chain is not for us to come in. You know? But it's a big market for everybody to operate, and I'm sure everybody is equally competent. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. We take next question from the line of Ashit Kuti. An investor, please go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, come, uh, sir, just uh, continuing with the earlier questions where uh, the explanation uh, was given with regards to the export market that the process is a bit different. It is not a tender system. If you could throw some more lights, is it more on uh, joint venture? Is it more on uh, tie-ups? Uh, how, how exactly we are exploring the market, export market? I'll address it very uh, simply. Uh, guys, export markets don't work on tenders typically. You, right. If you are looking at the civilian industry, right, you are looking at a ROI-based kind of an approach, which is where you define what the investments are for others and you are trying to capture the enhanced returns of the savings which they make and therefore uh, explaining to the buyer uh, where, what exactly is this ROI, right? So that's one thing. In a G2G tender, there is a very different dynamics which is at work, right? So depending on where exactly uh, we see maximum sales impact and sales effort impact coming in, we would be employing a variety of strategies. It's too early to say whether we would be partnering uh, in, a, in a joint venture format with somebody else or not, but definitely... Uh, we will require partners across the globe as you know for for local implementation. What form it will take, we don't know. It's very early days right now. Am I okay. answering your question? Uh, uh, to an extent, yes. Uh, it would have been better. I mean, say if uh, you would have shown uh, thrown some more uh, detailed. Uh, but maybe it's uh, not we, possible. We, 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 we can't. We'll, let's save some things for some surprise, right? Positive surprise. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's very early days. It's very early. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Anyone who wishes to ask a question, may press star 1 on your touched on phone now.
Thank you. As there are no further questions, uh, we, we got last question from lineup. Uh, Ashit Koti. Sir, please go ahead. Uh, sir, uh, EPSA has uh, moved uh, or come a long way from uh, OTCI listing in 90s uh, to where it is today. So if we have to look at EPSA microwave as uh, from here onwards to next decade. Yeah, I think we have already gave a picture for the half decade. Um, it is too early now. Uh, so we'll take it forward from that. I would say defense industry as a sector has established itself. You are aware of Atmanirbhar Bharat. That is becoming a reality. You are aware of BEL, HEL making great strides. You know, you are aware that they are, you know, cracking or they are beginning to crack the export market. Uh, there are multiple defense sector companies itself which are coming of age and with increasing visibility and increasing certainty about of, of business. The earnings stream in, in itself is becoming more predictable and sustainable. I think these are the ingredients for an industry which is becoming mature will become more mature as we go further. And I think there is, it's a, such a sizable industry in terms of macro numbers that there's going to be a huge amount of business which should be coming across uh, all participants. We have to make sure we are conservative enough in terms of our balance sheet management and be prepared for the long haul. That's our vision. That's what we are playing at. So uh, thank you for the, you know, for highlighting our journey from when we started. And I think, you know, as, a, as a, an analogy which I like to say is that, you know, we have lifted off the runway. We are gaining altitude. And I think we will be at a cruise stage, uh, cruise stage very soon. Yeah. And that will be a very nice moment for all, all of us who have believed in the story. Great, sir. Thanks a lot. And uh, reserve my few more questions for the next, next meeting. Okay, so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As there are no further questions from the participants, I'd now like to hand the conference over to Mr. S. G. Reddy, Managing Director, for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Yeah. Thank you for uh, thank you for uh, being there with us for the one year, one hour, and I hope to see you at the end of uh, Q4. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Astra Microwave Products Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining with us. You may now discuss.